171st Lloyd Derby on Friday night. Um, I suppose the perfect opportunity to, to get back on track after the last couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, we had a little, a bit of a break, well, an enforced break since with the international sort of break since, uh, uh, you know, our disappointing cup defeat against Waterford. So we had gave the players uh, an extra couple of days off. We came back midweek last week and I've had a really good training week so far and looking forward to the, the build-up for the game on Friday. And... Um, as you said, a really good chance, I suppose, when you have a little bit of a disappointment. Um, you want to get back on the horse as quickly as possible and try and rectify that. So we've had to wait a little bit longer, but we're really looking forward to the game on Friday. How do you, how do you look back in the last couple of, couple of weeks and the last couple of results? Yeah, obviously, there's no getting away from the fact that I, I wouldn't like people, me post-match, for people to think, you know... Um, we're accepting our defeats and uh, and we're not not going to start. There's no one more disappointed than the group within. Obviously, we were two games away from getting to the Aviva last Friday week and we missed that opportunity in the week before. It was very disappointing to UCD uh, defeat. But them games are in isolation in regards where we're going through. There, there's no getting away from it. A little bit of a of a of a disappointing spell. Uh, probably our first continuous in regards to defeats uh, since the start of the season. But I was I was have no doubt that when I when we took over in mid December that this year there was going to be spells like this. It probably just came a li it's come a little bit later than maybe I'd factored in in regards to what stage of the season it was. But I had no doubts. I said it was going to be there's going to be bumps along the way and a first year in anyone's projects when you're trying to build basically the play inside of the club from from ground zero all the way up it's never going to go swimmingly it's just ours has happened probably at a stage where it's coming towards the culmination of of cups and culmination of the league with only six games left now but uh, there's no one more disappointed than us but also I think there has to be a little bit of realism in it all and just where the club was really at on the playing side of it and off the pitch uh, the last back end of of the la of last season and, and coming into the start of pre-season um, I don't know if people realise of wh where it all was at and what needed to be done so in that regard just the, play the player inside of it the players that were here last year and the new young player players that have come in and playing their first senior football of their lives, of their career, of trying to play week in, week out with expectation. You know, there, when you take a look at it from the outside, there's always going to be, I felt, without a doubt, there was always going to be turbulent sta stages in it. And we're sort of in ours, and hopefully we're out of ours, but only time will tell that. But I had no doubt these type of spells were going to be here. You know the club better than anybody, obviously, as a former player, and obviously coming back. It's it's natural everybody in town's disappointed, but are you are you surprised by some of the reactions? There's been an awful lot of rumours and stuff floating around that I'm surprised. I'm sure even you've been sort of raising your eyebrows. By yeah, a few it. people have got in touch saying, uh, "Have you walked, etc." So <laughs> you know, rumours. I don't know when these things happen, but this is what makes the club uh, so great as well, and the town so great. Of living in the town, um, and for the players, it'll be a big eye opener for our, our players as well of expectation and being in a a fulcrum of a place where it is the main talking point. So um, that's what makes Dundalk so special. Football's number one. The football club is number one in the town. And um, we'd never shy away. From, well, I'd never shy away from that expectation. I actually love it. You're obviously, it's not a good place to be in regards when you lose games, the disappointment, the whole town's disappointment. But when you do get it right and you have positive outcomes and, and positive positive matches and positive seasons, you know, there's no better place to be. So you embrace both sides of it. And as I said, that's what makes Dundalk so unique and so special. And you got to love it if you want to play for Dundalk. you got to love that uh, side of it. And if you want to be involved in coaching or managing, you got to embrace it and love it as well. Even though it can be t really tough weekends when, when you have uh, disappointing results. And we carry that, like I carry that back of me over the weekend and the following week of disappointing the town and disappointing, you know, people who really identi identify with, with the club. But, um, you know, I have no doubt that there'll be more good times than bad times and we're just gone through mm. a little bit of a disappointing spell and that's all it is. How important is it for, you mentioned a lot of young lads coming in, they've seen, we obviously got great run in Series 2 and 3 and now they're, they're starting to see that bit of adversity. But experience is the only thing they'll get them through yeah. that during the first season how important is it for everybody to get behind them rather than 
you know, they're, they're probably not at that stage in their career now yet where they can... Yeah, definitely. And it's inexperienced, their experienced players don't underestimate the, the impact that supporters have mm. in regards to players' confidence of of really feeling them behind them. And the, the supporters have been brilliant um, this season. And as I said, we've, we had more really good nights than disappointing nights. Now, the disappointing nights are fresh in our mind, but you need that in football in regards to be a player. You're going to have moments of adversity. You're going to have disappointing spells from your own personal form-wise or the collective of the team form-wise. And um, I was coming into this job in mid-December, a week or two. We had eight or nine players for the main part of, of January for our whole pre-season. Uh, we were still assembling a squad, but I was definitely coming into this job this year as very much with an underdog mentality in regards to Dundalk, the club, where it was at, what needed to be done in contrast with where other clubs were, were building from come uh, mid-December and January with established squads with getting real good quality, a lot of lads from our place, really, really good lads, Dundalk legends leaving, so I definitely had I was under no illusions of the task in hand and the last six games we have a chance to do something really, really uh, special, I think, in regards uh, if we get Europe, but the, the, the supporters are, are, are the main help, they're the main inspiration. No coincidence, that's why our home record's so good, it's because of that and it's because of the confidence and the real sort of invigoration the supporters give give the players, the young players, the experienced players and um, I've been there, I've been out in the middle of the pitch with the supporters when no reels rocking and it's mm -hmm. no better place to be and that's why any player that comes here they love their time here, um, be it if they live in the town or they don't live in the town. They know they're playing for a football club whose identity and a town whose identity is the football club and you don't get that. You obviously, you see it a lot of places in Britain and in England and Scotland and the likes, but in Ireland it's very, very rare to get like a provincial town where the number one is, is, is football and um, that's why it's such a special place to play. Bradley, Bradley, left footed in towards Pat Hoover with the header. Oh! What a goal by Pat Hoover! What a wonderful goal by Pat Hoover! Magnificent! It's a big game! It's a big goal by a big game player! Every club gets injuries, but I think we've been unlucky. We've, we've sort of got them nearly at the, the one time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, probably something as well. As beginning of the season, we needed to be sort of fortunate with injuries, etc., and with the squad depth point of view and that. And obviously, we've had some of our biggest player, biggest personalities, and and uh, biggest players contribution wise this season have been out for a prolonged period of time, as you said, all at once, mm -hmm. um, which is a disappointment um, for everyone involved. The players that have come in. Because uh, we are sort of light, we've got into a lot of games very light on the bench with players having to play then. So there's a little bit of inconsistency with your with your team selection uh, for that period of time. And it's just something every squad has to deal with. It. Probably we've just been a little bit unfortunate with uh, so many big players and big personalities being out at the one time. So um, it's something we're just going to have to deal with. Hopefully th those players will be coming back in the very near future, but you know, they, they, they have missed an extended period of time, which which has taken taken quite a lot away from the squad. Mm. You mentioned last year, I was looking back, it's it's almost a year since we played Shamrock Rovers here in front of the RT cameras when there was a huge amount of question marks over the club. We didn't know who was going to be in charge, we didn't know where the, the direction the club was going. The atmosphere of that night was incredible. Four of our last six games out of this year, if we can get that atmosphere and get everybody behind us again and rowing in the one direction, to qualify for Europe would be a, a fantastic achievement. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, I was from the outside looking in last year. Um, you'd still keep a close eye because it's, it's, the, it's the club you probably have the most affiliation with. But um, we need that. There's no doubt about it. As I said... I, it's probably so recent about the such success the Europa League group stages, the leagues and the cups, but mm -hmm. in the very recent times we've been mid-table in the League of Ireland, so known as a divine right, especially where the club was at, as I said, new owners coming in middle of December, um, no coaching staff, no playing staff really in situ, still piecing it all together when pre-season started, so... I thought you were going to have the same year at one stage. Exactly, it was just me and you in the in the building for a couple of weeks over the Christmas and that, Gav. So I just, I think people, I, I'm not using excuses or that, or 
it's nothing got to do with a reflection on the job that's going on or the job we're perceived to be doing. It's it's the truth. I really mm. want the supporters and the town to grasp. There was a real worry about where the club was at, where it was going. It was starting from scratch, a whole new club basically. Um, at the start of January, just gone. So for the first season, to be third with six games to go, I think everyone would have taken that. I definitely would have taken that. It was only in February or whenever it was, the end of January, Bohemians beat us 5-1 at Oriel in a pre-season friendly. So if you were to say we'd be coming third with six games to go with four of them at home, um, I think everyone would have been delighted with that. I most certainly would have because I was realistic of where, where it was at. I think what happened, obviously, second and third series of games got everyone's hopes up, mm. and rightly so, got everyone in the building's hopes up of where we could end up, but there has to be a certain where have we come from, and I just felt we're probably always going to have a little sticky spell. We've, we're having our sticky spell, and uh, hopefully we're out of it, but I think I just want the supporters and that to be turning up on Friday and knowing where the club was, where potentially it was going, where their league positions finished the last two seasons and where it is now and what there's left to play for. So really, as I said, with that sort of bit between the teeth of we're striving, I'm very confident Dundalk will get back to where it was and we're striving to do so every day if you're in the environment, if you're in the culture, the demands and that. Everything is geared and striving towards getting back on top of the mountain and getting back, back on top. And um, it's going to take time. Don't get me wrong, we've lost in the Cup quarter final to Waterford and lost to UCD previous week. They're, we're not accepting those defeats. We're owning them. Um, I would take the defeats in isolation. They've come back to back. But on the grand scheme of things, we've not lost lots of games and 30 games. We're still putting lots and lots of building blocks in, in place. And we will still be hugely, hugely more advanced going forward even towards next season mm. than we were basically coming in the first day with around 10 days or two weeks to go for the first day of pre-season mm. with two players signed mm. and no coaching staff and no strength and conditioning coach and no physio and no nothing. So these things take a little bit of time. The next six games are huge for them at home, you said it, for cup finals uh, at home and have that underdog mentality because at the minute on the landscape of the League of Ireland, Dundalk are underdogs mm. from where we were. We have to have that hunger and eye the tiger mentality that we did have in 2013 from a supporters base in 2014. We just need that final push from the supporters and the town to not get us over the line, but to, to really make the culmination of the season a memorable one.